So it's time to build something new. For a while now this cockpit's been slightly held back by the autopilot panel. Now if you've followed along with the build over the years you'll know that this panel was constructed substantially later than the rest of the, uh, certainly the input panels and, and it was constructed to replace the original autopilot panel which is part of this panel here. This is the fire control panel and the autopilot which, which lost its place in the cockpit once I went to put in the, the instruments. This was originally an input only panel you may remember. And so I've constructed this autopilot replacement panel not to the same standard as the rest of the panel, although it is perfectly functional and absolutely adequate for, for what it does. But that said, it's visually not particularly appealing and uh, there's, a, there's another aspect which has become increasingly interesting to me and that is with the exception of the instruments and the GPS everything is input only so there's no lights or digital displays or readouts of any kind on the panel and I think it's time to have a go at doing some of that. The autopilot panel in particular is an intriguing test bed for such, such a thing. Now you may be aware that the panel is built around Leo Bodner boards for the for the handling the inputs almost exclusively the BBI32 boards there's one BU0836 board as well which has the analog inputs as well as the digital button inputs and those boards don't really lend themselves to out outputs there, there is a facility to hook up to each of the switches an LED but that's rarely appropriate for I mean it's appropriate in a small subset of cases the, for the autopilot panel it would be appropriate for the on-off switch for example all that does is it ties when the switch is in the on position uh, you can have an LED tied to that so it can illuminate but most of these switches are momentary toggle switches that toggle the state of some system and the LED would need to follow the state so the Bodner boards aren't really helpful for that but I have stumbled across recently a thing called Moby Flight which runs on an Arduino Mega board. Now of course this is not a new thing, many people will be aware of this and it's probably drifted in and out of my um, field of view <laughs> over the years but somehow the time is right and, and I've decided it's going to be interesting to have a go at using that. What that will do is, that what I like about that is first of all it's a cheap solution, the Megas are you know can be had for, for like £10 or something like that um, if you buy a clone that is and then you need just a bunch of LEDs. You can also run using MobiFlight the seven segment LED displays. So you could build yourself radio panels and so on. I'm not going to build a radio panel but coming back to the autopilot what would be very nice is if even on this board here if I could have the LEDs illuminate when the various lateral and vertical modes are selected. So I would press heading mode and there would be an LED illuminated there when heading mode was active. That's the first thing. And that extends to, I mean this panel is a hybrid panel. I've actually got the AP106 autopilot on here which are these bottom six switches and the on off toggle switch. The other thing I've got on here is an altitude pre-select and the three buttons for the altitude alerter. Well first of all to have the altitude pre-select have a digital readout of the altitude, that would be great. Um, at the moment, just stepping back a bit, you know all the output information, so those LEDs for the mode selections are shown on the replica autopilot gauge on the air manager panel, so they light up when the modes are selected. And likewise the toggle switch has a, an on off LED and I think it shows the trim adjustments that kind of on flickering LEDs as well. Um, but coming back to the altitude alert, so the altitude alert pre-select is shown in this box over here. There's also an indicator light which illuminates at a thousand feet before or after the target altitude. And the three buttons are actually in the virtual cockpit and on this 2D panel here. The buttons are actually a combination of buttons and, well they're illuminated buttons with, with legends on. So it'd be nice to have those on a, a panel as well. I mean ideally combined with the switches but alternatively just again to have an LED to to show when for example the altitude alert 
mode has been selected or the minimum descent altitude. And then going a little further than that, in fact, you know what would be what's going to be helpful here is if I, if I can replace all of that output with actual output on the board. Not only is it going to be very cool and a lot more ergonomic, but it's going to allow me to free up space on this panel. I could remove the autopilot, I could remove the altitude select window, I could remove the three button slash indicators for the altitude alert modes, and also I could go on and I think I would like to take the or implement the autopilot indicators as well. Um, so these are I can't exactly remember what these are. These are well, we've got the over to the right here. We've got the nav and glide slope arm indicators in the middle, and then to the right we've got the nav and glide slope capture indicators. But it'd be nice to take those out, put those on the on the panel or, or a panel as well. And again, so coming back to the air manager panel, it would allow me to get rid of the autopilot, the altitude pre-select window, the autopilot indicators. The altitude alert indicators. Uh, and I mean, going further, even you know, well, anyway, let's we'll stay there for now. But but if I can take those off the panel, I can then save some real estate and shuffle the panel around. And what I would actually like to do ultimately is, I mean, this is a chain of events that all hang together. I'd like to be able to move some of these primary instruments over enough to put the engine instruments over here, which is more in keeping with where they're supposed to be in the twin otter. That in turn would free up space on my, what is currently largely the engine panel. And really, you know, a lot of the things on here aren't that much use. I would like to be able to remove this leftmost instrument panel, which is a, more, a monitoring portrait mode, replace it with a smaller one, which is about half the size, and that will open up a space towards the bottom left of the console, so I can put in the Rex Milvis weather radar. I quite like the idea of incorporating that into the cockpit. So there's all sorts of benefits of, of being able to implement some of these outputs. I mean, it just makes the panel more authentic as well. So going further, there's no reason why we couldn't implement some of these other things as well, like the yaw damper toggle, or even these um, indicator light, light clusters for the Twin Otter up here. So we could do those on a custom panel at some point. I mean, ultimately, we could take away everything except the gauges. Uh, I mean, gauges, <laughs> implementing the gauges in an analog form, that's, uh, you know, that's theoretically possible with Moby Flight. Indeed, it can, it can operate servo motors and stepper motors, although I think that those functions are somewhat experimental at the moment. But, you know, that's a whole other ball game. You'd have to build a gauge mechanically. You know, it's a nice idea and I may have a go at that at some point in the future. But short of that, you know, removing everything but the strictly analog gauges from the air manager panel frees up a lot of space and, and just makes it a much cooler panel altogether. <laughs> now one of the reasons I like this particular solution, this Moby Flight solution, is it's completely, well two reasons really, it's a black box solution. Now, it uses the Arduino Mega, but beyond plugging that into the PC and loading the appropriate Windows drivers for that. There's no need to get into programming the Mega. Now I don't want to get into that because it's a whole new you know, field of technical stuff. But Moby Flight does all that for you. All the configuration, certainly for standard functions um, for FSX and P3D, is pretty much done by selecting things from menus. And that includes driving things like the seven segment displays. Because the worry there is using a, an aircraft model such as the Twin Otter Extended, which is a non-standard, you know, it uses LVARs and custom coding. Now you have to wonder if that can be interfaced through Moby Flight, and indeed it can because Moby Flight is based on it sits on top of FSU IPC, and it allows you to, you know, on a fundamental level, monitor offsets within. FSU IPC and crucially FSU IPC allows you to stick values into custom off there's a whole block of or several blocks of custom offset locations that you can use for your own devices and so in my Lua code in, in Linda for example or in a, an FSU IPC Lua program I can arrange to pull values out of LVARs within the Twin Otter extended model 
and just stick them into known offsets within FSU IPC. Then MobiFlight will be able to look at the offsets in FSU IPC and pick up those values. So that's all possible without too much extra programming and what such programming that there is is within the sort of Linda slash FSU IPC domain and so it's all very already very familiar to me. I don't have to get into the Arduino programming at all. So that's one thing I like about this solution. The other thing I like about it is it's a completely add-on solution. I don't have to do anything, make any changes to my inputs with the Bodner boards and with Linda. The Arduino board, the MobiFlight, the LEDs and the LED displays, that stuff sits alongside the Bodner boards and Linda, but there's no interference at all. There's, uh, they're completely independent systems. I like that idea because I can fiddle with it and if it, if it works great, if it doesn't work, it doesn't affect any of the existing functionality and I like that idea. <laughs> you know? I mean you can use MobiFlight to manage switches and encoders. Uh, I don't know if it has analog inputs. It probably does but um, you, you can do that as well. It's a different model of managing those inputs and uh, I don't have any need for that at the moment. So, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to order up some of those components, have a play. I'll do a very crude implementation of this first. They're probably not even connected to the autopilot panel itself. I'll just have it sitting alongside to see if it works. If it works, I might do some interim modification to this board, such as drilling holes in there and poking the LEDs through. I could just like stick the digital display on the top of there or something. I might do that as an interim step, just to then play around with it for a while to make sure it's reliable. I want to make sure it's reliable before I start removing things from the air manager panel. And then ultimately I'll, I'll order up some more of these acrylic sheets and rebuild this panel or a panel that's similar to this or an, ex, you know, an extended version of that. And then hopefully we'll end up with something that's a step closer to a realistic panel.